What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dennis and I'm Olivia. What a beautiful woman. Today we're going to talk about how to share the gospel with a Muslim. If you've watched my previous video, you know I briefly touched on the topic, but today, per your request, we're going to talk about it on a podcast format. Get a little deeper. Share some personal stories because I was once Muslim. She was a Christian girl. We're going to be answering some of the questions that you guys asked in the last video. One of the questions that the audience had was, how do I bring up my faith with this Muslim person that's in my life in the first place? What are your thoughts on evangelism? I am a firm believer that if you have encountered Jesus and he has made an impact in your life, why wouldn't you share it? You know, if you feel like someone is going through something like they're going through depression or they have anxiety or they're just really struggling with something personal, then that's your opportunity to hand them that life vest and be like, here, try Jesus. Like he can help you. He can heal you. He did it for me and he can do it for you too. Having that personal relationship with Jesus, praying about it is really important for when you're bringing it up to somebody that is a non-believer too. I believe it's one of those things where Christians, we can't get caught up in how do I evangelize? Our lifestyle should be evangelism, right? We show people Jesus. We talk about Jesus. We walk like Jesus. When people see us, they should be like, bro, there's something different about you. There's a light. Now there's certain people like Muslims or atheists, right? You could tell, ooh, if I bring my faith up, I don't know how well this response is going to be, right? I really rely on the Holy Spirit with Muslims. And what I mean by that is, I start praying for their hearts to receive the gospel, right? I start praying for them diligently. On top of that, I'll ask the Lord to present me an opportunity to speak with them. And sometimes that person will come up to you, they'll share a struggle that they're going through, they'll share uh, something that's stressing them out. They'll even come up to you like I came up to you and said, yo, I'm depressed. Right. And that's your moment, right? That's an alley-oop from God. You can dunk now. You can share your faith. The next question is, when did you know that you were going to share Jesus with me as a Muslim? And how did you prepare to do that? I felt like the Lord was already preparing me when I had started reading the Bible more. I started getting deeper with him. And I knew that there was going to come a day where I was going to share it with you. Mm. I didn't know how or where or when, but I knew exactly when it was the perfect moment. I knew that it was time to share with you the gospel of Jesus. And it was in the car. It was a time where you were really struggling with depression. So I knew that, look, Jesus helped me. He helped cure me of depression, anxiety, all of that. I'm like, he's going to help you too. But You're like, that's my moment. Yeah, that was like my moment. I knew like the Holy Spirit was like now. Amen. I think it's one of those things where your preparation is in your devotion. Yes. You should already be prepared. Like at any given moment, if the Lord sends someone to me or someone comes to me, I'm ready to share. Because mm -hmm. I already have that relationship with Jesus. Now, I found that when I'm not reading my word as much, when I'm not praying as much, my desire to minister goes down. And I believe even people in the world, even Muslims, they can discern if what you're talking about is real to you or if it's something fake that you just got brought up in that has no power. In the book of Mark chapter 16, it says, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. We as Christians should be walking in such a power because we have the Holy Spirit, right? We should be walking in such a power that it's noticeable, that there's signs. Amen. And that way God can work in our life too, especially as we minister. Now, I got really offended when you brought up Jesus. Do you think it's okay to offend people when you share your faith? 
I don't think it's a matter of offending people. I think it's who you are, and sometimes you can't control if that offends them or not. And you should never apologize for being who you are in Christ. You're not doing it to get their approval. You're not doing it to get them to like you. You're doing it because you see that there's a need there. You're doing it because you love that person and you care about their salvation. Say that again. You're doing it because you care about their salvation. You love that person. Amen. That's what it is. It's love. Yeah. And when we become Christian, it says, It is no longer I who live, but Christ alive inside of me. Amen. I don't care if you get offended, baby. Yeah, I don't care either. If someone gets offended, then I'm just like, let your will be done, Lord. Exactly. Because even with me, you can't control the outcome as a Christian. We got to realize this. We can't control how that person responds. We can control our obedience to God. In that moment, you were obedient. You planted a seed. You watered a seed. The rest is in God's hands. But I'm not going to risk that person getting offended and knowing that their blood is on my hands because I didn't share my faith with them. And that's what Jesus calls us to do. That's literally something that he commands us. He wants us to preach the gospel, preach the good news to the ends of the earth. And just everybody on this earth, like he wants them to go to heaven. He wants to have a relationship with them. So you got to see them as someone that is like, literally, it's Jesus's child too. You have to see them as that person. And that's what can really, I feel like, propel you to speak the truth. And not worry about their opinion, not worry if they're offended. It's not your problem. You just do what God tells you to do, like Dennis said. Be obedient. You know, it reminds me of when Jesus went back to Nazareth, Mm. right? Everyone knew him there, but it says Jesus couldn't perform that many miracles and signs because they were offended by him. They were offended. If you're offended, even by God, he can't work in your life. Because you're not operating in a manner to receive from him. If this person gets offended by me, at that moment, they're not able to receive anything. But hopefully, them reflecting on why did I get so angry will later on lead them to God. Now, when I was Muslim and I opened up to you about my depression, right, that I no longer wanted to live. I knew you were Christian, but we never talked about the faith like that. You shared the Lord with me, but I came at you so aggressive. I didn't receive what you said at all. I started insulting it. I was blaspheming. F that. F what you're saying. Did you ever get discouraged by that? How did that affect your faith? How did that affect your desire to keep talking to me about Jesus? Well, at first, I was really thrown back, and I think it caught me off guard which I feel like can happen sometimes when you're like evangelizing and you feel like that person totally rejects what you say and they, you know, it starts to become like an argument. But in that moment, I also knew that my faith was firm in God. And because I asked him to save you, I believe that he was going to. Mm. I just think having that faith and belief and trust in God is something that will sustain you when you're evangelizing or when you're talking to someone about Jesus that doesn't know who he is. So I just stood like firm on his promise. Yeah. And I was still persistent because as you see, I still kept talking to you about Jesus, but there was a turning point. What were the biggest obstacles that you faced in sharing your faith with me? The biggest obstacles that I faced had to have been you trying to logically process the bible when i was trying to explain my relationship with jesus and why he died for us and all that stuff that is so vital in life you were trying to logically figure out who god was who jesus was and you weren't really looking from the heart you weren't genuinely seeking do you feel like you struggled to know who jesus was from the heart i think the obstacles that i faced in coming to the faith were one I was very prideful and I wasn't reading the Bible. I was logically trying to dismantle it in every single conversation that we had without even opening up the scripture for myself because it's corrupted, right? It's not applicable. It's not the truth. The words that you would speak, they would infuriate me. I wouldn't understand it. 
I didn't want to read the Bible. I was overall just like, yo, you don't know the background I come from. Like, my mom and dad are Muslim. I'm born to this. I'm staying this way. I'm defending this. Even if I got questions. I was going to say that. There was, like, a lot of cultural differences, too. So many cultural differences. That was a big, like, obstacle with us. I was like, bro, I will defend this forever. I'm born to this. I'm staying this way. And I believe Satan traps a lot of people in that. No one should follow something because their parents follow it. Because their friends follow it. Absolutely. It's got to be the truth. For you. And in the Bible, it talks about how the truth will make you free. And the absolute truth is Jesus. I love that verse. Me too. Because that was the first time God ever spoke to me. Oh, yeah, that's right. Right? I remember that. I ain't going to get into it in this video, but <laughs> something that happened. Yep. It was not good. And I told Olivia, yo, I just heard a voice speak to me and said the truth will set you free. And I was like, that's literally a Bible verse. Like, I was like, what? I was like, I swear that was in like Disney Channel or some movies. <laughs> like, it was so cliche. The truth will set you free. Yeah. But then you showed me John 8, 32. I was like, okay, this is weird. Yeah, I thought, I'm like, did he like read the Bible? Like, how did no, he do that? <laughs> no. But that's another key point too. You bought me a Bible. Yeah. I think too, if you really want to know who Jesus is, you got to read the Bible. Like, you gotta read God's word. It's literally, like, his mind, but it's about him, too. It's about him and us. Developing that personal relationship takes time, just yeah. like if you're dating somebody, you mm. know? You don't marry them right away. You take time to spend time with them. You talk with them. So it's like a thing. You have to get to a point where you've shared your faith. Now they have to have the desire to seek it on their own. Right, but they may not even want to seek it on their own, but that's why you're planting a seed. You're giving them a Bible. Amen. You're letting them know like, hey, this is available whenever you're ready to read it. God's there. The, the Bible's here. All the information is available for you. When we would start to argue about Jesus, was I ever able to make you doubt your faith? No. No way. Yeah, I was firm on God. Like the Lord had already, he made himself apparent to me. He was so real that nothing was going to shake that. And I had a good foundation with Christ, which is so important to have a solid, good ground foundation with Jesus so that the roots can't be pulled by Satan, by other people and their opinion, none of that stuff. You need to have a firm foundation in Christ so that way nothing can tear you down, nothing can knock your faith down. And that way you know, like, look, I trust in God. Whatever happens, I put it in His hands. And I asked that because I read a couple of comments where someone's like, I shared my faith. They came at me with so many questions and, you know, harsh responses that I'm starting to doubt my faith. Mm. And I think that's where you need to be very careful. And what I mean is when I first got saved, Jesus became real to me. We got to look at the parable of the soil. Some seed fell by the wayside, some fell on stony ground, some grew up with thorns, others fell on good soil. I heard the word, I immediately sprung up. I was like, I gotta share this with everybody. But then people would kind of ask me some tough questions, right? And I personally didn't get discouraged, but I was like, yo, like, I gotta go find this in the Bible. Because if I don't, it's gonna bother me. And I know it's gonna leave a crack in my foundation for my faith, right? So take it as encouragement, but recognize it takes time to get to a certain level. Yeah, and I totally agree. Like, even when I first evangelized to you, I didn't know everything in the Bible. I think, like, people get really flustered yeah. by not knowing everything in the Bible. That's okay. Like, that's okay. God is going to teach you. We're all, we're all Christians that are learning over our lifetime. We're always learning something new when we read the Bible. Sometimes I'll read the same chapter, and I'm like, I didn't even see this the last time I read it. Being firm in the Word of God and what you do know, God can still use you. Even if you feel, like, little or, like, oh, I'm, you know, still new to all this stuff. Just share your faith. Show through your actions. Show how God has worked in your life. Share a testimony. Amen. That That's is good. huge. Like sharing your testimony, even if you have nothing else to say, can really impact somebody. I think people get discouraged by how long it can take 
for a Muslim or an unbeliever to give their life to Jesus? I think it's all about contending for what you believe in, for what you want. You will have to pray in the spirit. You're going to have to pray against demonic spirits that are after that person. Because Satan is after your mind. He's after your heart. And he doesn't want you to be rooted in good ground with Jesus. He wants you to be confused. For a Muslim especially, to accept Jesus comes with a great cost. Mm, yes. You can't rush that. And I know we went through hell, it felt like. For years you were praying for me. Yeah, the, it, it took a long time, guys. Like The stories that we tell on YouTube... It took a long time for Dennis to come to faith with Jesus. It was years in the making. Yeah, it didn't just happen, you know, in, in a day. Because for a Muslim to confess Jesus Christ as Lord, they have to think about turning their back on their family, on their past generations, on their culture. You're essentially losing everything. You're losing your identity. It's your so-called identity. Yeah, and when you shared Jesus with me, and then I actually started seeking God for myself without even telling you, Jesus was becoming more and more real to me. But the thoughts going through my head were, there is a big price for this. If my mom and dad find out, if they even realize that I'm seeking after Jesus and becoming a Christian, they're going to flip. So I think it's really important to be patient with this person. Because even in the Bible, it says, as long as the earth remains, so will seed time and harvest. I don't plant a seed in the ground and then yell at it in five minutes. Get up out of there. Grow. I don't do that. So how do we expect someone who got brought up in a culture that completely denies and for many years. Jesus Christ as God, that completely denies that he died on a cross, that he resurrected, and then expect them to believe it like that? No, we got to encourage them. Seek the truth, man. Seek the yes. truth. Seek the truth. Now, some people, they're convinced that what they believe is the truth, right? They're like, nah, I believe in this God. I believe this. This is my truth. God bless you, bro. I respectfully disagree according to my scriptures. And I think that's important, too, having fruitful conversation versus an unfruitful conversation that you brought up in your last video. Yeah. You have to be able to discern, like, hey, what direction is this conversation going? Is it going to lead to something where that person is going to think about Jesus, think about, hmm, maybe that is the truth. And another thing I wanted to point out, too, there is a cost to being his disciple. Yeah, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow, follow me. me. And also, you have to lose your life in order to gain it. Amen. So those things are a lot of things that people, some people are not willing to go through. But it's the true price of literally happiness, fulfillment. It's, it's Jesus. I believe once you experience Jesus, you can't help but not go through it. Yeah, you, like, you literally have to. And, and sometimes it's hurtful, it's painful. But it's so worth it. And it doesn't feel good. But in the end, it is so worth it. I just want to encourage like you guys to just to keep praying, keep believing God for whoever you love that you want to be saved, and being patient. It's... All that stuff is huge, and just praying over that person, your seed, that Dennis talked about. There was a point where it was apparent, Jesus or Dennis, and I think a lot of people are scared to lose that relationship, and it can sometimes compromise their faith, especially if you're dating a Muslim, right? You came to a point where you're like, there's going to have to be a decision that's made. Were you going to be okay with walking away if I didn't get saved? Yes, because I wasn't willing to compromise my belief in Jesus. And that was the path that God had revealed to me. Like I, I was going to follow him no matter what, even though I loved you. Yeah. Uh, your salvation was important to me. It was more important to me than my relationship with you. Amen. And if it, and if it had to come down to me and you separating and not being together or whatever the case was, then so be it. I just ha would have to just trust God. But that didn't happen. Thank God it didn't happen. Hallelujah. God, li literally, guys, like he always comes through. But it is important to realize that sometimes God will use someone else to minister to them later yeah. on in life. That may not be their moment to come to Christ. Sometimes you're a destiny helper.
Exactly. That person isn't always meant to be in your life forever. It's someone for a season, right? Now, this isn't a video about should a Christian date a Muslim because you were a Christian. Your faith wasn't at the level that it is now because had it been, it definitely wouldn't have worked out. No. But we'll probably make another video yeah. where we talk about navigating a relationship with someone that's Muslim and you're Christian or someone who's an yes. unbeliever because I think a lot of people have questions about that and kind of how we overcame that with the Lord. Yep. But it's one of those things, guys. Every person's salvation is more important than their comfort, more important than your comfort. God's called me to talk to people that makes me very uncomfortable sometimes. <laughs> and I try to resist it. I can't lie to you guys. I love sharing my faith. But sometimes the flesh will be like, dude, they're going to get so mad. Yep, I've been through that too. And you just got to tell that flesh, shut up. That's right. Right? And I've You're even tried, I've tried to walk away from people that God told me to talk to. And I literally can't. Because in that moment, I feel his weight on me. Yeah. Like, don't you dare turn your back on this person. Because I didn't turn my back on you. And I'm thankful because I went 15 years without anybody ever telling me about Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Think about that. You were the wow. first person to share the gospel with me. Powerful. Powerful, right? So powerful. First person. Now, you couldn't get me to believe it. I had to come to that on my own. But you were the first one who was like, yo, it doesn't matter what he thinks. It doesn't matter how he reacts. He needs Jesus. Everyone needs Jesus. Recognizing the need and forgetting everything else, forgetting what you look like, what you're going to sound like, if you stutter, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Like, who cares about all that extra stuff? Just share your heart, share what you know about Jesus, especially if they're in a vulnerable place, guys. I know even if they get angry, they will appreciate it or they will think about it at some point. It's all about just like we talked about planting that seed, let God do the watering, but stay encouraged. Do not lose focus and don't get worried if someone doesn't accept the gospel right away. What if they come at you with so many questions about the Bible? They're trying to debate you. They're bringing up scriptures. How do you respond? Know the word of God. Know the Bible. That's why it's important too to be well versed in the Bible. Not saying you have to be like a Bible scholar, but make sure you're reading it every day and doing your daily devotionals with God because that's what makes you stronger as a Christian and it makes you stronger and more confident to evangelize to people. I hear people, you know, they tell me, I feel like God really wants me to spend more time with him. I feel like he's really calling me to read more, pray more. Recognize that it's not just for you. He's preparing you for someone else. Amen. Because I look at it like this. There could be two worlds. One world where Dennis is studied up on his Bible. He's prayed up. That person comes and I'm able to answer the questions about the scripture because I've read them. I know the context. I know what the message is that's coming across. Or I could be another version of Dennis that didn't spend enough time in the Bible, didn't pray enough, said he's Christian. Someone comes up to me with questions about the scripture that I say I follow. And I'm like, bro, I don't have the answer. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't even read that scripture. In that moment, I lost a tremendous opportunity. Not because it wasn't God's will, because I wasn't prepared for it. Now, we could sit here and talk for hours on this topic. But I think the key things are being Holy Spirit led with that Muslim person. Yes. Not willing to compromise on your relationship with Jesus in order to make them feel comfortable or yourself comfortable. Be willing to get uncomfortable for the sake of the gospel. Developing a strong relationship with Jesus Christ is also important and you can do that by reading the word. This will also help you evangelize other people because you'll know the scriptures really well. And also showing Jesus in your actions, through your actions, being the light that God has called you to be. That really does speak volumes about who you are as a Christian and people can see that light. Guys, thank you so much for all of your support, your prayers for this ministry, for continuing all of your support. Keep putting all your testimonies in the comments. We love your testimonies. We read your comments. We are also praying for you guys. 
We really love this community and keep staying encouraged and motivated to share the gospel with someone you know. Even right now, text somebody, ask them, do you know who Jesus is? Talk to someone that the Holy Spirit has put on your mind. This is a great way to share the gospel at your fingertips. That's good. Y'all watch this video. I'm gonna ask you to do something. <laughs> After this video, you're going to ask the Lord who he wants you to share the faith with. He's going to tell you, because we serve a living God who speaks, and you're going to do it in the name of Jesus. And then you're going to leave a comment and say, I did it. Yes. Leave I that did comment. It. Be like, I sent that text. I called them. I spoke I to them. I did it. Yes. And we're praying for you guys. I know I can't respond to every comment. I try my best. But I love reading them. You guys encourage me tremendously. I share them with Olivia. I share them with my family and friends. It's so beautiful. And even in the comment section, you guys are sharing your faith. You're ministering. We don't know who's reading it. We don't know who needs to see it. A brother, a sister, an unbeliever, a Muslim. But I love you guys tremendously. We're praying for you. Thank you for all your support for this ministry, for liking the videos, for subscribing, commenting. Much more to come. And make sure that you comment any other podcast videos that you want to see with us, any topics, any questions that you guys have. We love to interact with you guys. I think the next topic might be, can a Christian date a Muslim or marry Ooh. a Muslim or an unbeliever? That's a good one. If you want us to make a video about that or anything else, comment below. Until next time. Until next time. In Jesus' name, we love you guys. Be blessed. Talk to you soon. Amen. Amen.